What's this guy doing, huh? He's a wild card. You have no idea what he's doing. Today, we're talking about the biggest fantasy wild cards of 2021. Guys where they could be a league winner or they could just take a you know, a turd in the third. Uh, you got to stick around and find out who we're talking about, but these are important players. Hey, this is DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. June 10th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. That's me. One of them. (laughs) Those are me. (laughs) What a... What a weirdo. Look, man, it, we're, we're recording this as usual. It's the off season, so the the, uh, the day before. And all I could do during the intro is I'm just singing about the <laughs> I'm singing about basketball in my head, man. you got to rally the valley, Mike. So I'm a little distracted. Yeah, I don't know how annoying our son's fandom is for people right now. Don't care. Well, I know that. I know that part. <laughs> That's me. Those are me. Uh, Al Borland is here. How you doing, Al? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Also me. <laughs> Judge Giamatti. Hey, how, how are you doing today? Excellent. Not Can a I, big basketball fan, um, Mr. Giamatti. Nah. Mm. Not yeah. enough money in it. No? No, not, not not for him. Not a big enough market? You don't own any franchises? Not yet. He actually, I don't, did you guys see it come through the wire? He bought uh, Manchester. Oh, the, really? The Manchester United? football team. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Very expensive. But not for Brooks. Now, was that a bidding system, or did you just he he you walks brought in. a bag? He of just cash. walks in and goes, "Yeah," and just throws money everywhere. And they're like, "Oh, I guess you own Manchester now." Three percent of his net worth, from what I understand. Also, the city, the city of Manchester. He bought the city as well. Uh, today's a fantasy wild cards episode. Last year, we these are hard to rank players. We all we all picked out some hard to rank players. We're going to talk about them. Last year on this show, we talked about um, four players that ended up really. It's, wild. It's I mean, so fabulous. Devontae Parker, w- major fantasy wild card. Mark Ingram last year. Tom Brady, DK Metcalf. Um, so we have some more names for 2021 that we're going to bring up today. None of those guys finished okay. Right. You know, it's like either they – I mean, this is why they are fan- fantasy wild cards. That's what we're going to be dealing with today. Everybody we bring up today are going to either be outstanding – or really disappoint. Wide range of outcomes. Yeah. It's just they're not going to be neutral. So we got that on the show today. Some buy, sell, some news to talk about. We'll avoid the Phoenix Suns as much as we can. Eh, I make no promises. Look, well, man, it's been like 12 <laughs> years since we got to even think about the What's Phoenix ironic Suns. is we don't even know, you know, at, at this point while people are listening, we yeah. might have lost last night. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't Doubtful. That. Oh, that's true. That's true. Good point. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow Jason at Jason FFL. Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. People ask if we're bandwagon Suns fans. Would you describe yourself as a bandwagon uh, NBA fan? You look. I will. You okay over there, Jason? Yep, just dropped. A <laughs> I will. I will gladly accept that because I was out for so long. Uh, but. Back uh, back in the day of growing up of the Barkley and the Nash era, I was a diehard Suns fan. So, I I, I don't consider really I don't consider myself a, a bandwagon fan. I just I was gone for a while because I only have so much time, and they did not care about winning very much for yeah, a decade. I'm a lifelong Suns fan who only really cares <laughs> when it that, matters. That's, that's not bandwagon. That's fair weather. Thank you. Oh, fair Thank weather. You. Yeah, They're I mean, way different. I mean, I don't know if it's really a badge of honor to keep watching trash. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, why is that considered such a bad thing? I've always said since I became a dad, you have to earn my attention. Exactly. Like, if you have uh, something sharp in your shoe, you don't just keep walking around with it. And you're like, yeah, I've, look. Dude, it's, I've walked on this for four it, miles. It's been in there. I might as well leave it there. It hurts every time I, I take a step. I heard the analogy of like a bad restaurant. Like, 
Look, if the yes. restaurant gets a new cook and they start serving good food, you go there. But you, it's not a badge of honor to be like, yeah, I always ate there, even when the food was bad. I, look, we went back to that's Chili's big, again. That's how big of a fan I am. <laughs> Love that Chili's. All right, let's do <laughs> Why are you, you? You are on a vendetta against Chili's, and that is not – we're not getting them as a sponsor anytime soon. Also, don't care. Um. All right, let's do some buy sell, uh, which uh, you guys will have to hit the button for me over there because I don't have it. You guys stole it back. Well, you don't trust me with it? Oh, power hungry producers over there. I don't see it. <laughs> buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. I, for a fact, you, you do not have the right to clean that up. Oh! You're, you're leaving that as is. I love that he. There was no words said, just a sheepish little pause, and then the button was That's finally right. pressed. We were just hoping it wouldn't get brought up again, but now that it has, <laughs> yeah. you it's better a, learn. That's you a better Brooks, learn. Brooks air. That was um, oh, that was panic over there. Brooks, did you just fall on the sword for for Jeremy? No, I'm, it, it was it was true. Hundred percent you. Yep, I don't should have been it. there, and it wasn't for you. I well, don't believe you know it. what? It just shows that wealth doesn't buy um, competence. <laughs> <laughs> oh and i just love that you don't get to cut it out now because that was too entertaining all right buy or sell um i don't even like this one <laughs> josh jacobs 1100 rushing yards in 2021 buy or sell 1100 rushing yards in 2021 um for reference you know we're reorienting ourselves to a 17 game season that would be 65 rushing yards a game that's nothing when I hear 1100, I'm like, wow, that's probably too uh, too high a bar. With, you know, obviously he was one of the leaders last year, but yeah, I mean, I'm gonna sell that. Really, uh, Mister Josh Jacobs, Andy what? Holloway, who is the most Josh Jacob apologist I've ever met. That's why I didn't like this selling. being a buy sell because I don't want to talk about him anymore. I am shocked. I thought you you were saying it's ridiculous because 1100 is just way too easy of a buy for you. Look, I'm a buy. I'm a, oh. I'm a buy of the 1,100 rushing yards, 65 rushing yards per game. Uh, look, he had 1,150 yards uh, last year in 13 games. Josh Jacobs is a good player. I mean, the entire argument around him is simply related to – What was the baseline we're putting Drake. here? What do you mean? The, the 11? Well, I mean, the, sorry, what's the number? 1,100? Yeah. <laughs> I just checked my projection. You have to be a buy. I have him at 11.07. Oh. I have him seven yards above this line, so I guess I'm a buy. I just think it'll be close. I'm not counting on Josh Jacobs to lead the league in rushing yardage. I'm counting on him to still be heavily involved and to score a ton of touchdowns on a run first team. Yeah, the line is really good, and, and it's good that we're bringing this player up because he is a fantasy wild card. Uh, his he range is. of outcomes is very, very wide. He could uh, very much impress this year, and you know, if Kenyon Drake comes in and just essentially takes over the role that Jalen Richard and, and Washington have had in the years past, then then it's fine. But when I look at this team, I, I'm going to sell the line of 1,100, and the reason is really because of the offensive line and the okay. rushing – you know, he was only 3.9 a carry last year, and now their offensive line projects to be worse. So I've got him for 255 carries, which is a good amount, but I don't think he's going to be as efficient as he's been in the past and as we would hope he would be. So I've got him down for 1,071 rushing yards and an obvious sell. That's what I was going to bring up. The loss of Rodney Hudson to Arizona. Uh, thanks, Gruden. Uh, Gabe Jackson, Trent Brown. I mean, that's... That's a lot of your offensive line, and, and a little nugget here that Kyle the Borgogan dug up over the last decade of all rushers over 1,000 yards, he was almost dead last in yards per carry. Like This was completely a volume play for Josh Jacobs, and it's... It was 12 touchdowns, too. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah we're, I'm not talking about his fantasy finish, just saying how efficient was he on the ground, and now you have... Kenyon Drake is... While it wasn't a great season last year for Kenyon Drake... They view him as a very competent running back, clearly with the contract that they gave him. Well, the contract they gave him is basically the same that the Ravens just gave Gus Edwards, right? Yeah, Gus Edwards is a very competent running back. Yeah, I, well, I'm just saying it's a two-year, $11 million deal for Drake. Um, Jacobs will have a ton of carries again, and it'll come down to touchdowns as to whether you're happy in fantasy. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, 
but 17 weeks, I think he can get. I mean, I, apparently I have him seven yards above this threshold, forcing me into a buy. <laughs> When in some ways I don't even want to talk about just Josh Jacobs anymore because I don't it's, want to be seen as the it's apologist. It's only June, man. I well, know you, you you planted your flag. You can't back off now. I didn't plant. I back just, to back, my guy, man. Oh, stop it! <laughs> I've never. I mean, it's like it's like your Tyler Lockett thing. Like he was the number eight running back last year, and I feel like somehow Josh Jacobs disappointed people. Yeah, yeah it, it, it does is feel crazy. Like I've game. never. Yeah, the, relative to what the high hopes could have, you know, would have been top five type of thing. Yeah, it just shows how much consistency matters for fantasy football because my guy, Tyler Lockett, your guy, Josh Jacobs, both top 10 at their positions, both destroyed you know where they were being drafted at, and yet it felt bad because it didn't necessarily always help you. And Brooks win. pointed out the 1150 was the, the rookie season. I flip-flopped those in my head. Last year was just over 1,000? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he was actually really consistent last year too, though. Yeah, cause it's twelve. Jake, so why, so why is everybody so disappointed? Is it because of his week one? It's because of the injury in week thirteen, which was a playoff week. It was because of the pump fake injury follow up week, where you didn't think he was going to play, and then he did play. And the uh, I think Jason's right. The expectation set from week one. He was the domination. running back one, right? Yeah. Three touchdowns, crazy week. Yeah, if you take last year and just project it across a full seventeen, it'd be twelve hundred yards and thirteen and a half touchdowns with uh 37 receptions so yeah i don't pass know pass him the ball i think the bad taste of the um not meeting the the week one expectations like jason said mixed with the Kenyon drake signing makes for just kind of a meh a wild a meh, card a wild card um all right that was buy yourself from pristine auction use the code ballers over at pristine auction.com get that ten dollar credit let's talk news news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper Not a lot of big news. Calvin Ridley had a uh, minor foot surgery in Green Bay. A little cleanup. Not going to participate in minicamp. Should be fine for training camp. Yeah, I mean, uh, nothing to worry about yet, but good information to have. And if training camp rolls around and there's a problem and he's not on the field, then... Is this one of those preemptive strike surgeries, Jason, that you talk about? Uh, yeah, you always want to get your surgery before you need it. That way, you're, <laughs> you know, it's out of the way. Um, it, it was funny because... Um, Arthur Blank was just avoiding questions at the press conference about, you know, oh, he he wouldn't say that he's injured at all. He's just, oh, Ridley's doing everything we're needing him to do right now. But he wasn't there. And so it's just like, now there's no Julio, no Ridley. Camp is looking real good. And speaking of training camp, it was official Ooh. that MVP Aaron Rodgers did not show up for mandatory camp. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah. Uh -oh. It's it's a it's a <laughs> battle right now, yeah. a battle of wills. Curtis Samuel groin injury. <laughs> um, you can put the uh, you can hit the hype train for this. Yes, please do. Uh, Sean McVay touting Cam Akers' versatility, entering the second season. Cam His Akers. quote said, "He's obviously a great runner. He's got the ability as a pass catcher coming from the backfield." and we can displace him and put him out in the slot or other receiver locations. Uh, no limitations. We'll see how it comes to life. Yeah, I mean, if if you're looking at our rankings, Cam Akers is, is – You're in. Astronomically high on – I'm terrified. This isn't one of those – like a lot of times you go in on a player and I play it in my flag and I'm telling everybody I'm right. Um, this is what I project, and I, I, you know, I, I think that this will be a, an outcome for 2021, which is outstanding fantasy value for Cam Akers. But I am scared of it because I, I certainly see many ways that it could go wrong. But I project him to be extremely involved in the passing game. I think that was part of why they made the shift from Goff to Stafford was they want to use all their eligibles. They want to use the tight end more. They want to use the running backs more. Um, and Cam can do it. It's just a matter of whether he gets the opportunity. And I had one more uh, thing I wanted to talk about because it was, it was very interesting. Caught my eye. And shout out to uh, to Jake Tribby. He's, uh, he writes for Fantasy Points, our friends over there at Fantasy Points. Uh, and he it was I mean, it's a chain of events because he was pointing to an article from The Athletic. But out of camp for the New York Jets, Keelan Cole, the forgotten Keelan Cole who had his flash in the pan for the Jacksonville Jaguars, he is running with the ones right now, and it is presumed that uh, across from 
Corey Davis. From Corey Davis, who was their big – Corey Davis was the big free agent acquisition from the, the New York Jets. And they also signed Keelan Cole. Uh, kind of – you know, the obviously that wasn't as heralded as Corey Davis, who was coming off a great season. Denzel Mims, meanwhile, the former second-round pick of, of last year's draft, is running with the twos. And it was – I mean, it was simply a – well, it will be Corey Davis and Denzel Mims will be the starting wide receivers for the New York Jets – but this is extremely interesting and something that people need to be keeping an eye on. And uh, the report from The Athletic was talking about how they want to run the Shanahan system and Denzel Mims doesn't fit that archetype of that type of a receiver, which may be why he's running with the twos. I mean, we're, all, we're really in speculation right now. But this is, this is a big deal for dynasty value of Denzel Mims and just the redraft sleeper hope of Denzel Mims like he's an incredible athlete and a contested catch type of a receiver he's a vertical guy yes yeah he, he's he's like a Kenny Galladay but uh but like in a really athletic version of that but this is wild well man. It, it goes to show that like especially when you f do fantasy year round like you cannot just you know put a depth chart in your head and stick to it you need to stay water and understand that these teams don't see the world the way that we see them. And right. the draft capital of Denzel Mims and the fact he was with the previous head coach regime, like those things matter. Keelan Cole, it's funny because to a lesser degree, he's like Robert Woods was in Buffalo to me, where like you kind of physically see the gifts and abilities and talent all the time on the field, but he's not elevated in your brain until he gets an opportunity. I mean, I will say this, Keelan Cole's success at the at the professional level has come out of the slot a lot of the time. So this is not, you know, being opposite of Corey Davis, that's not something that we've seen as much success from Keelan Cole. They have Elijah Moore in the picture there too. And Crowder's still around. And Crowder's not only just there. Crowder, I saw a report that Zach Wilson has the best report so far through the OTAs. Oh, boy. Yeah, with oh another boy. name, Braxton Berrios. So it is that's no <laughs> oh joke. No. Uh um, he was the most target it, I mean, that's really what I take away from this right now is kind of hands off. Is yeah, the 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 Jets wide receiving core needs to I mean they're 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 you know, doing the sifting through the sand, right. trying to get the they're gold. Painted. And right now there is just a lot of dirt in that basket, and I'm gonna wait until I see the shine before I, you know, really declare Who's the one? Who's the two? You know, who's making the roster? Keelan Cole. It was a five and a half million dollar contract that yeah. they gave him. Well, he's a very he's a very solid NFL wide receiver, trustworthy. Like Mims hasn't quite hit that level yet. Right, and, and that was the the point of bringing this up was really to talk. I don't th I don't believe that Keelan Cole is going to have incredible fantasy value, but it's more of a the path. Holy from, crap! Denzel Mims is running with the twos. The path for Mims is is probably. I mean, your odds are low at this point. Yeah. With with Corey Davis signing, with Elijah Moore's future, like you should probably ship Mims out right now if he's got any shine to his name. Definitely. All right. Before we move into our fantasy wild cards, want to thank today's sponsor, Hello Fresh. You know about Hello Fresh, the America's number one meal kit. You get fresh, pre-measured ingredients, mouth watering seasonal recipes, and they are delivered right to your door. Skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy and fun. All three of us have had HelloFresh for years. The box shows up. You're like, what, you're like, what am I doing for dinner? And then ding dong. Oh, yeah. Hello it's in Fre the box. HelloFresh has me covered. They cut out the stressful meal planning and the grocery store trips. You can enjoy cooking, get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes, or you can try HelloFresh's quick and easy meals, 15 to 20-minute dinners, breakfasts on the go, and more easy options, perfect for your busy lifestyle. And get better value, man. HelloFresh is 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal without sacrificing the quality. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Once again, HelloFresh.com slash footballers12. Use the code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And when you're enjoying that nice meal, might as well have a good glass of wine. You are correct. And here's what you don't want. You don't want a bad glass of wine because not all you wine are correct. tastes good and certainly not to everybody. But that's why First Leaf is a great way to have your wine delivered to you because it's 
tailored to your palate. I don't like white wines. Some people love white wines. I, I prefer sweeter reds. Um, and when, when I went and became a member of First Leaf, you take a quiz. It talks about everything, like the, what kind of aromas in general in life you like, what kind of specific um, you know, wines you like, what kind of labels, how fancy or unfancy do you oh, want to get? Oh, you fancy. And, well, it, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. It's great, but it customizes it and sends you curated boxes of wine based on thousands upon thousands of reviews and descriptions of these wines. There's no guesswork. There's no misguided recommendations from an employee who doesn't actually know anything about the wine or what you like. Um, it, it's really a great service, and they work with the best winemakers to not only get the best, but to save you up to 60% off retail. So you can save time, money, and stress with First Leaf, the wine club designed for you in mind. Join today, and you'll get six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping. Just go to try firstleaf.com slash footballers that's six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping at try firstleaf.com slash footballers no i'm saying no the brakes guys why aren't the brakes working because i cut the brakes wild car I forgot about that job. Oh, that's a treat every yeah. year. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. All right. We each picked out some, like we described them before, hard to rank players, wide range of outcomes, lots of uh, question marks, but that's where value can be found. I want a new. I want a new piece to this this year. I want at the end of our descriptions of the wild card, because we're painting the, the range of outcomes. Okay. I want us to declare whether we believe they hit or miss on the on the range of outcomes. Which which side is more likely? I'm not going to do it. Okay, I will, <laughs> and you're welcome, Foot Clan. Well, then why don't you kick it off and just show us how it's done? Yeah. All right, I'll start with DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift is an ultimate wild card because he is extraordinarily talented. He's great. When I watch him on the field, he makes people miss. He is so smooth as a pass catcher, which is where a lot of his value came from. He had a nose for the end zone, eight rushing touchdowns on a already bad team right yeah that seemed impossible it does seem impossible I mean they, they only there was a 5 and 11 team a lot of people are making a big deal of the fact that you know the Lions are a bad team and you don't want a running back from a bad team well this running back missed three games and really didn't in the beginning of the season wasn't very involved in their game plan he finished as the running back 18 already on a bad team now this team wants to I mean come on Dan Campbell he wants to dedicate yeah. to the run. And if you had to tell me, hey, I, I don't necessarily trust the offensive mastermind of Dan Campbell, but well, here's what I do trust. I trust him to say, oh, we're down two scores? Should run the ball. <laughs> we should really establish dominance on the ground. Um, and I do think that they will still have Swift involved in the passing game. When I statted these players out, I was very surprised how high Swift was in my rankings. Um, because I, I am down on the Lions and down on their prospects. I don't like their running game, but it was really the passing volume work because not only is he talented, but there's not a lot of other options out there. I'm not a big believer in the Brashad Perriman, Tyrell Williams 1-2 at wide receiver. That's why I've been high on DeAndre Swift. That's why I've been high on TJ Hawkinson because there's just necessary volume. Every NFL team throws X amount, and these players have to – someone has to catch the ball. So – uh, within the range of outcomes for DeAndre Swift is, you know, is one of those type of league winning top 10 yeah. type of backs. He's that talented. However, the picture is also painted on the other side where um, the touchdowns were really the thing propping him up the most in his rookie season to get to that running back 18 finish that and the targets. And you've got Jared Goff coming in who might not throw the ball to the running back as much as Matthew Stafford. The touchdown opportunities might not be there if they project to be, uh, even worse than a five-win team, and you have the history of kind of third-round running backs in fantasy football. It's it's really really not good. Um, Kyle, third round ADP, third round ADP, which is where right now you're finding, and I expect him to land. The, like he he is the definition of a yearly third-round running back, a guy with plenty of talent and upside, but a lot of question marks. And you wonder, should I avoid? Should I get? I don't I like drafting wild cards in the third. No, no. Well, let me tell you how that's worked out. Okay, there's been 28 running backs drafted in the third round 
for the last five years. Okay, that's a huge sample size. And you've got we we've categorized everybody into a bunch of different league winners, huge win, hit, miss, big whiff, and landmine. Uh, the landmine and the big whiffs. If you draft those guys, it's going to drastically hurt your team. A turd in the third. A turd in the third, my man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that rhymed. Yeah. So good. That's what the people come for, man. So how often has a turd in the third been drafted? <laughs> Uh-oh. 46%. Wow, running those, backs in the third? Of those running backs in the third. 46% have, of turds. Have been a big, that, big turd. That's only, a real turtle head situation. Only two of them have turned out to be league winners. It was Aaron Jones and Derrick Henry. Now, those were gyms that you found a couple years ago in the third round who, I mean, look, if you hit, I mean, those were yeah. wild cards. If you hit, it's going to help you get to the championship. But more often than not, these third-round running backs suck, and there's a reason that they're not drafted in the top two rounds. Is that a rounds. side argument for <laughs> for running backs in the first and second round? I mean, yes. if you're basically yes. punting one running back for a wide receiver or tight end in the first and second round, you're hitting the third round going, oh, boy, DeAndre Swift's still on the board. I can grab him. Yeah, I mean, that that's, that's a problem. I mean, I – so in the end here, my wild card, I, I certainly could see a great season for DeAndre Swift, but I don't believe that that's going to be – if if I have to put my money on you know hit or miss, I'm going to say he's going to be a miss this season. It's oh, that's just, the example of what we're supposed to do. It's just too many things that could go wrong, and the only thing you're betting on is just pure talent of of the individual. That's that's it. And that's not even saying anything about Jamal Williams. Well, out. don't forget Michael Warren. They just signed him. Oh, fantastic! No, I, I'm I'm super worried. I mean, he's a wild card. He's going to have big games, but I am concerned about consistency, touchdowns, all the things that you highlighted. The nice thing is that he is the pass catcher. So and but then Jamal Williams can do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, he can. But DeAndre Swift is better at it, and I know that the Coach Lynn was talking up uh, uh, DeAndre Swift. But and we and we have evidence of Jared Goff, you know, like those Todd Gurley years. That was Jared Goff who was throwing him mm -hmm. the ball over and over and over. Now, completely different system. But so there's let me ask you this: there's Would at least be, evidence that it can still work. If you just took what he did last year, which I know was fragmented and took time to get going, but the end of the season, you know, the total fantasy point numbers. I mean, are you? Is that a turd in the third, or are you happy? You'd be happy if if he if he did what he did at the end of the season. He did that yeah, for the season. I think well, no, I just happy. I mean, if you got it all, if you got the whole inconsistent, didn't know when to play him, but fantasy finish that you got from Swift oh, last year. No, I think you'd be disappointed. Okay. His his running back. If if you got what you uh, got last season in its entirety, I think you'd be sure, mostly it, disappointed. If you get that, but to me, you f to ask that question, you have to take out the beginning of the season where he wasn't the starter because he is now the presumed starter and he, he wasn't drafted that way last year yeah I don't know if I have seen enough between the tackles running the football to declare Swift you know elite doing that I know he's a pass catcher but mm -hmm. you know 114 carries that's not enough for me to know what he's got at the next level on this team Jamal Williams is such a team guy everybody every writer every player he's the best they love Jamal Williams everyone does and this is a coaching staff that that I feel like that's going to really matter I mean who's a better pass catcher Jamal Williams or Aaron Jones Aaron Jones and who was in so often on you know the two minute drills yeah it was you Jamal think Williams. it was pure likability like man I like that guy get out there <laughs> it's trust get out there it's, buddy <laughs> these are human beings who they have trust in other human beings and they say man I let's get that smile out there on the field I trust Jamal Williams to do pass whatever protection. is necessary yeah, yeah. exactly pass yeah, part of it all right, let's um I'll, I'll go next here. My one of my two fantasy wild cards I think you guys will agree it's Robert Tunyon. Yeah. Tied in for the Green Bay Packers. Um right now, I mean last year he had 59 targets. He caught 52 of them. Had 11 touchdowns, was a a, a big impact player for fantasy leagues and a steal. Finishes the tight end 3. But huge wild card. Huge wild card heading into the new year, and that's that's completely removing the variable of like Aaron Rodgers. Even with Aaron Rodgers back, just presume him back. He's still a wild card. He finished at tight end three, but there was a huge gap between the tight end two and the tight end three. Obviously, Kittle wasn't out there last year, but it was a 74-point gap between Darren Waller and Robert Tunyon. Since 1992, 
only two pass catchers had double-digit touchdown receptions in a season with fewer than 60 targets. Robert Tunyon's one of them, Gronkowski, back in 2010. So he was an anomaly in being able to put up those kind of numbers on that few targets. Gronk's a Hall of Famer. That's right. He was, you know, and he's a very – Robert Tunyon's a very talented guy, and if you bank on efficiency, bank, you know, bank on yeah, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers being able to do that. But, you know, Kyle looked at every tight end that's caught eight or more touchdowns in a season – from 2014 through 2019. So there's 23 tight ends. Every single one of them had major touchdown regression, losing an average of five touchdown receptions on the next year. If Robert Tunyon gives you last season with six touchdowns, he's, oh, a, he's a whiff. Yeah, that would be awful. So uh, the risk reward of Robert Tunyon is it's all touchdowns. It is on, you know, they, they love him. I think they love him in Green Bay. They need him. They didn't. It's not like somebody else is coming in to be a weapon on the offense outside of what we're used to in Green Bay. Devin Funches does not uh, submarine Robert Tunyon's potential. He doesn't? No, not yet. I mean, I hope he does for the sake of that drop that we got. I want to bring that back out. But, um, look, I think Tunyon's just a really scary pick. Like, I don't know where. Like, at no point in the draft, no matter the value on Robert Tunyon, Will I feel like drafting him means he has an auto start on my team? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Even totally. if he's a great late round value, even if he's a 13th round pick for my team, at no point will I feel like I can put him into my tight end spot and lock him in. I'm still going. If you draft Robert Tunyon, keep your eyes on the waiver wire. Still be looking at players that you can uh, find as gyms late in the draft or on the waiver wire that you can stream at the position. And, the, and you're saying this even with Aaron Rodgers back. You're saying Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback next year. If you draft Correct. him, keep your eyes on the and waiver wire. And if he's not, good golly. Well, you won't draft him, right? Yeah. Tunyon will not be – yeah, he won't be on the if, – If it's Jordan Love or even if it's Blake Bortles. Oh, Blake the Snake. If it's Blake the Snake. Then, Let's go. Yeah, then you're out on, on Tunyon. I'm, I agree that he is a wild card. Uh, but to me, it, it's all narrative, but he does seem to have got that – Aaron Rodgers trust and you have a you have a James Jones type of a a situation for but it's going in your your tight end slot so that that's a nice little boost there where if you're getting him in the later rounds I'm I'm still intrigued what's funny is if you if you believe he earned that trust over the course of the season and you look from week 11 on that's when he put up prolific numbers he ended the year really really strong consistent it's ironic, though, in those games, still on pace for just 60 total receptions, but it was right. 15 touchdown pace. But yeah, and, and if you want to make the case for Robert Tunyon, the, the case is that what he did last year in establishing his value to the team, to Aaron Rodgers, is that next year he'll be more involved in the passing game. It's not like because he had you know 50-some-odd receptions last year, that's what he's going to get this year, and he's got to have those touchdowns. Right. Like, it, it maybe he up. ends up with 70 receptions, and, a, and he becomes the second target. So the, there's a there's a way that it could happen. I just don't think we believe that it will. Yeah, and his snap percentage, he's not one of those tight ends that's out there all the time. I mean, whether or not he earned the trust last year, he's out there 60% of the time. So you are um, – That's like, it's like I mean, Mark, Mark Andrews. Andrews. I was going to say, you're looking exactly like a Mark Andrews clone here, where it's going to come down to touchdowns. He might have some monster games. Um, what he had that three touchdown game in week four last year, and if it's a full one to one clone of Mark Andrews to Robert Tunyon, I'd rather have Rodgers throwing the ball to my clone. That's a fair point. Then fair Lamar. point. So that's both sides of it. If I had to put my money on one side, I I probably would uh, would not bank on Robert Tunyon as a starter all year long. But right now, his average draft position is in the late eighth. So. Yeah. I'm if okay you're with, outside of I'm the top okay five that. elite options, I mean, what? You're not doing a lot of harm putting them on your roster. I'm okay with that. All right, the first player I want to bring up is wild card. Is a wild card. It is Chase Claypool from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, wild card. He is a wild card. Let's set the stage for him. He is an absolute hulk of a human being. He's six four, two hundred forty pounds, and he runs a four four two. In his rookie season, the first ten games, he was a wide receiver three or better in seven of them, and he was top 12 in four of them. That is incredible value that you yeah, got. Yeah, you were doing the worm that whole time. You were really happy. It, it was great as, as a Chase Claypool truther, and you had the four-touchdown game. Like It was incredible for Claypool to start. 
And then the final six games of the season, he was a wide receiver for five of those six games. The only time he was solid was, in fact, the, the final week of the season when he played without Big Ben. Now here is where things get dicey. It's all about Big Ben. Is the arm actually better? That is now become a focus out of uh, the news that's being reported out of uh, the, the Pittsburgh camp, talking about it was like three tendons that had to get repaired for Big Ben. He came back rather quickly. They changed the entire offense because Ben did not have the deep ball last year, which normally he's, he's okay at it, but it was clear it was gone. But is the arm better? He's really he is old. You saw that yards. Yeah, per most arms don't get better. like the goal of a right. quarterback is like, hey, can I keep it the same yes. from year thirty eight to the year thirty nine? But there is the chance that his arm is actually better. And even with the bad arm, Big Ben was still on a seventeen game pace of forty three hundred passing yards and thirty seven passing touchdowns. That's a lot of production to go around for your wide receivers. The team is all in. Pittsburgh is going to ride or die with Big Ben for one more year. It's Mason Rudolph yet again as the backup quarterback, and they know they know what they have in Mason Rudolph, and it is not a starting quarterback. I think they know what they don't have. <laughs> yes, they, they know what they have. They know what they don't have. And as Mason Rudolph is there to help out practice and not come in and be the starting quarterback. But since 2000, since the year 2000, rookie wide receivers with 10 or more receiving touchdowns, it's just a handful of guys. Odo Beckham Jr., Tyreek Hill, Mike Evans, Calvin Ridley, Mike Williams, and Chase Claypool. Now, aside from Mike Williams, who – Mike Williams is a good wide receiver in the NFL. It just has not worked for fantasy football. But that other list of names, those were superstars. Superstar outside of – Outside of Mike Williams and, and Odell Beckham, I mean no, that stop. list is amazing. Current, it's fine. It, that's fine. If you want to just, crap on Odell Beckham, just to take number a one, we won't go there. But number two, uh, <laughs> yeah, I kind of stumbled into that one. Uh, number two, Odell Beckham was a league-winning yes. wide receiver for many years. No, he was elite. I've, everyone knows that. And but that it, doesn't even factor in that Claypool had a little, he snuck in a couple rushing touchdowns. Uh, like so, they have that option as well at the goal line. But what do you like? Big Ben's older. Is the arm actually better? It's I so do not hard. know. It's so hard because on the surface, all of the measurables, you know, year two, th there's so much to like about Claypool. I just don't know how to get my head around the passing offense. And like on any given week, Deontay Johnson, Juju, and Ebron, uh, you know, could be, and Najee could be how this sure. offense moves. I just don't know if I see a universe where one of the wild card outcomes is Claypool is the bona fide one. Yeah, it, it or would like take becomes him becomes a uh, an alpha. It would take him really taking a leap forward in his second year as as a player. Just Which get, he could do better. I mean, Absolutely, I guess he could do. Um, I've been rising on Claypool and and his outlook because you know if if I w when you're drafting players like this in those middle to late rounds, I want someone who could, so, someone who has a pass. So Mike, seventh round pick, Mike. What, what side are you on with the? I'm on the side of he will. I'm okay. on the side of he will return value for that. It, what's my ranking says I'm on the side that yeah he won't, you're that out. He won't. And he, so we we are split on him. Uh, an interesting thing of of like just scouring the box scores when Juju really started to hit for fantasy football. It was the second half of the season, which is when Chase Claypool was like I said a wide receiver four or or worse for the those final six games. Was that a matter of, of 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 arm fatigue? Was it a matter of the play calling because the offensive line couldn't hold up to pressure? There's there are so many questions for the Pittsburgh passing attack, but I'm gonna bet on the talent of Chase Claypool and him improving into that second year. Well, it makes sense. I think I've moved myself to the place where I'm not going to give the benefit of the doubt to the Steelers offense since Brown left. From that point on, it, there's always been lots of ribbons of why they could be better, and I'm not going to give it until it manifests. Yeah, I, th I think that's a fair approach. Um, I I lean on the side that I, I think there's going to be value to be had in Pittsburgh. It's going to be hard to know where it is going to come from, but Claypool is the easily the most talented physical athlete yeah. of of their 
you know, m- maybe he's not the best wide receiver, but he's certainly the best athlete. All right. My second and final fantasy wild card is Dallas yes. Goddard. Yes. Dallas Goddard could absolutely be a league winner this year. Every single year, there tends to be some tight end you get late or not in the top, you know, five, six guys who ends up saying, oh, I'm here now. It was Mark Andrews for a while. Then it was Darren Waller. It's like these late guys who they take a step up to be the next important fantasy option. Um, That could be TJ Hawkins. That could be Noah Fant. That could be Dallas Goddard. And I want to talk about his range of outcomes um, because I think they are very, very wide. Um, And I think that Dallas Goddard, he could legitimately be right now their best pass catcher. Yes. Uh, for the Eagles, he could be their best pass catcher, and he could legitimately be their number one target this season. He could out-target uh, D- Devontae Smith and Jalen Rager. He could be the go-to guy. Um, that is within the range of outcomes, or he could be you know, the, the third target in this offense. Um, obviously, we expect a slightly smaller passing pie with Jalen Hurts as the quarterback because if he's going to rush – For 1,000 yards, he's not going to throw for 4,500 yards. Um, You know, we see that with Lamar Jackson. That being said, the defense of the the Eagles are nowhere near as good as the defense of the Ravens, and the rushing ability of Hurts is not as good as uh, Lamar Jackson. You also have the fact that he's going to, for the first time as a season, we expect, Mm -hmm. be without Zach Hurts. And we've got, you know, four games without Zach Hurts where – more PPR points, more receptions, more yards, more touchdowns per game. It just makes sense. If he's the main tight end uh, and Zach Ertz is not there, you're going to get more targets, more yards. And he's coming into the the phase of your career going into year four uh, as a tight end where he could really take that step forward. And if you want a perfect example of his range of outcomes, how he could be great and how he could be bad, you can look at the two games that he had with Jalen Hurts last year. So Jalen Hurts played four, and in the third game, Dallas Goddard got injured left halfway through and then didn't play in the fourth. Those first two games that he played with Hurts, he led the team in both games in targets. So, And, and in both of those games, Zach Hurts was still playing, but Dallas Goddard with Jalen Hurts was the number one target in the team, and his fantasy finish those I weeks say it meant nothing. were tight end 20 and tight end 25. I've seen enough. I've seen enough Dallas Goddard over the past three years to know what he isn't. And I don't think he can be their number one target. I don't think he could be a PPR tight end in this league. Hmm. So you and I disagree. Um, if I had to put my chips, I, I think Dallas Goddard. Yeah, we Goddard, ranked him the same. <laughs> well, I mean, it, when you rank these guys and you're putting – I think you're putting that – um, that median, you're taking those those median. Oh, most he's solid. He's very solid. Probable outcomes, and I think he will be. Um, you know, he could be a Mike Kosicki from last year, where it's like, sure, it's okay. He's better than you kind of expected, and was fine for fantasy, but he didn't take that breakout leap. I do think that. I mean, obviously, I, I've I've been saying that I think Jalen Hurts is going to be able to move the ball more and throw for enough touchdowns to make this passing game relevant. If that's the case then Dallas Goddard will be great for tight end. Uh, but but as I just outlined, I mean, if he if he's not catching the touchdowns and Jalen Hurts isn't throwing touchdowns to him, he could just be a completely worthless tight end. Yeah. I mean, I think that I think that we've seen a lot of Dallas Goddard, and he's not going to be a yardage guy. He's going to be a touchdown guy, which tells me that he's probably not got a chance of being the number one target on that team. Uh, we he's already got seen, like one 100-yard game in four years. We haven't seen enough of him without Zach Ertz to make that call, to me. And one of Dallas Goddard's best attributes is that he is, in fact, not Zach Ertz. If you're, uh, my point is simply this. Most players that have an elite skill set in a certain area, whether or not Zach Ertz was there, you would see it manifest more than one time in four years, in three complete seasons. You would see some of that athletic. He's a good, solid tight end. There's no, look, we rank him the same because we see him the same on fantasy output. We're just disagreeing on the um, we're disagreeing on the range of outcomes. Where I don't think Dallas Goddard has the ability to demand that much of the offense. Like I would bet Devonta Smith has, you know, pushes for twice the targets that, that Dallas Goddard ends up with this year. I mean, he put up 524 yards in 11 appearances, and he was 
knocked out of uh, it knocked out of a couple. So I mean, if you're giving him like, just say that's about ten games, five hundred twenty-four yards in ten games is is yeah, not shabby at all for a tight end. He's not a bad yardage guy. I mean, the hundred yard baseline for a tight end is that's a bar too high to it's be. It's not like, a baseline. It's no, a no, no, no. It's no, a, you it's were, a Kittle. I'm it's saying a, that you brought that up as he's only done it once. And I'm I brought it up that, as his ceiling. Yeah, but uh, I mean that's that's a very very high bar to say. I mean he had so many games, seventy plus yards. That's great for a tight end. Sure. Yeah, we have him ranked the same. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, you, you think that he can become um, George Kittle? I think he cannot become George different Kittle. Different archetype. Um, I, I don't think that. But I do think he could break into where he is an every week plug and play starter um, that is fairly consistent. All right. Um, I guess I'm up. Yep. My second wild card is Dallas Goddard. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. It's CeeDee Lamb. And I think this yeah. one is like for a lot of people. What is CeeDee Lamb going to be this well, upcoming year? I think the problem is that he is not a wild card for a lot of people. Is I that think, the case? I think that they're, they've they already cashed in those tickets, and they're they're already celebrating the breakout of CeeDee Lamb. Well, I mean, there are, there are reasons for that, right? Yes. You, you didn't get to see him with Dak very much last year, yet he still had 111 targets, still had 935 yards as a rookie, five touchdowns, um, his pace with Dak – was 93 for 1385 and 6 as a rookie. So there there's the <laughs> That was in Dak's uh when, weeks when, 1 through 5. When, when Dak was going to be on pace for 7000 7, yards. yards or something. Now what's interesting about him that makes him a wild card is just how how much of a center of their offense he's going to be and how much time does he get in the slot versus being used in other places. Last year second most slot snaps in football, second most slot reception, slot yards. Um Mike mentioned earlier in the offseason, is it dangerous to fall in love with slot wide receivers? Uh, I, you know, there's a lot of talk right now about how good Michael Gallup looks around camp. Have you seen and, that? I, I was and him say, getting snaps in the slot. Yes, that was the that is a new report. Is that they're moving people around, which they they should be doing. There's no reason right now to think that C.D. Lamb's a better wide receiver than Michael Gallup is, in my opinion. Like, I don't think that there's a reason we should look at that and say CeeDee Lamb's a better wideout other than, hey, draft capital and excitement, right? Because Michael Gallup has gone up. He's put up prolific games, has a great rapport with Dak Prescott, plays on the outside. There, There is a world. Like, maybe the odds aren't super high, but there's definitely a world where Michael Gallup has a better fantasy output on the year than CeeDee Lamb does. It's small, but it exists. Uh, but then you look at the the first season, and, and he's one of only seven – Rookie wide receivers ever with 70-plus receptions, 900 receiving yards over the last decade. More of a game-breaker in the intermediate uh, realm. So I have him at 20 on the year. It's a fourth-round ADP right now, late fourth. He's just a wild card because what will happen is, is his draft capital. I'm worried that it's going to be like six weeks of guaranteed locking him into place even, things, even if things aren't going right. Does that make sense? Sure. So you draft him to be something you have up in your head as a fantasy player. And then how many weeks will it take for you to adjust to not having him in your lineup if he's not what you have up here? Because he wasn't startable each and every week last year. Um, and there's a wide range of outcomes for him. And that's one of the biggest mistakes and most difficult things to do in fantasy. I mean, if you looked at last year, even though those were prolific numbers for a rookie, you were happy six to eight times on on 16 weeks. So will he take a step forward? Probably with Dak. But it's really hard for fantasy players to make an adjustment from what you just said. Like you've already cashed the ticket. Mm -hmm. So you might start him. It was almost like how people treated Beckham. Like there was a point in the past few years where you probably needed to get Beckham out of your lineup. But it was impossible. I know, having him on my team. Because you were waiting for what you thought he was versus what he is. And there's a world where CeeDee Lamb is absolutely the third highest fantasy scoring wide receiver on this team. I love CeeDee Lamb. I think CeeDee Lamb uh, is is phenomenal, and he has a great season. But for him to be being drafted right now, two wide receiver spots behind Amari Cooper, that's just that's crazy to me. He's a slot wide receiver who is 
going to be the number two guy behind Amari Cooper. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, think Gallup, 99th percentile speed score above C.D. Lamb, still a high draft pick. I just think they like him a lot, and I like him. I think Gallup's super talented. I, I think Mike is right in the sense that C.D. Lamb does not feel like a wild card to most people. C.D. Lamb's a guarantee. C.D. Lamb is, mm -hmm. is a top 15 wide receiver. If you draft him, you just have one. And he could be, certainly. No but doubt. that is not a guarantee. He is a wild card. And go going into his second year, I think the range of outcomes wider than, than most people are drafting him to be. Mike, you're up. All right. Let's, let's talk about a running back who we probably don't want to talk about, but it has to happen. Old man David Johnson. David Johnson. Once the shining superstar of the Arizona Cardinals, once the shining superstar of your fantasy football teams, and – Last year, running back 19, he missed four games. He missed a partial of two others. And the truth about David Johnson, last year, when he was on the field, he was good. He was good for your fantasy team. In, in non-injury games, he only busted one time. One time. And he was very, very solid. Yeah, he's not, he's not breaking down the walls for your fantasy victories, but he was certainly contributing to it, and people don't want to draft David Johnson. I don't really want to draft David Johnson. When I saw him in my first run of my rankings, I said, hey, that's not possible, is it? And then you, then you compare it to what he did last year. It's like, okay, it's not that far off of what he did last year, but again, he is he's older, and the team – it's a bit of a mess now, right now in Houston. It is that going to turn into more uh, dump offs for David Johnson? We saw that he still had that. We had a vintage David Johnson game of eleven for one hundred six through the air last year. We running backs with at least thirty receptions last year. David Johnson had the highest yards per reception of that group. Like he still has it. Well, I, in the pass catching game. Let me ask you this, Mike. When you look at him as a wild card. Is James Robinson's season last year a bit of a an example of what you could have on a bad Houston team? Because, I mean, Jacksonville was awful, but you do have really limited weapons. We've talked about that. Like, right. If you lose the, your quarterback, if Watson's not out there, and you lost Fuller, and you're talking about, well, we just got to figure this out. We're going to be down in games. Like James Robinson did a lot in the passing game on a bad team, had touchdown opportunities. I would say I mean, Houston's going to push for that Jacksonville record. Yes, they are. I would say that the the age and the wear and tear on David Johnson's body, he would he's not going to hold up to what James Robinson did. And then you have you have to factor in the that Houston is just collecting running backs for whatever. Re I don't know what they're doing. Do you know how stupid we are? For what? We, but yeah, I mean, yes, I do. Yes. But, but why this time? Just because I'm laughing because like like four or five times in this talk we. We're obviously talking in the fantasy realm, but we're like, old man David Johnson. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, he's 29 years old, and I've sat next to this gentleman. He's a superhuman. And we're calling him old man, and he is a <laughs> superhuman. I'm sorry, David. I love you. Yeah, old for fantasy football, old for the NFL. Right. That, that's Set the walker clear. aside. Get out of there on the field. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And who is the quarterback for the Houston Texans? Is it Deshaun Watson? He's got his situation going on off the field. He doesn't seem to want to be on the Houston Texans. And then, so I think he said he wants to play. He'd like to play just, for Denver, right? He's okay with that. He's yeah. okay. I'm with cool it. playing anywhere. Really? <laughs> I'm, look, I'm cool playing for a team that has really good wide receivers, a great defense, a pretty solid offensive. Of course he wants to go to Denver. Uh, get out of here, Deshaun. Uh, but is it Tyrod Taylor? We've when, when Taylor comes in, targets to the running back seem to go away. Is it Davis Mills, who was a third-round pick, but technically was the first pick of the Houston Texans this year? And we saw uh, for Davis Mills last year, Austin Jones, the lead running back for Stanford, he pulled in 16% of the reception. So, like, that's solid. And David Johnson is the best pass-catching running back on the team, but there are so many reasons to not believe in him. And there were so many reasons not to believe in him last year, but when he was on the field, he was good for fantasy football. So... I he has a wild card of I don't know I don't know what to do with David Johnson. I hope he's great. <laughs> sure. 
I just I, I hope everybody's great except for Zach Hertz. No, I mean I, <laughs> they do. They have collected a bunch of interesting names you in got, the backfield. Philip Lindsay got Philip Lindsay Ingram. still has juice. That's the yes. thing. Like Philip Lindsay's going in that room and like who's all these old guys? He has, he, he, but but Philip Lindsay is also older himself. What is he, 20, twenty-seven. Seven, yeah. Uh, Rex Burkhead. Yeah, Rex Burkett was just added to the team. Oh, gosh. But it, while Phil Lindsay definitely has rushing juice, he is not <laughs> – that's a weird phrase. That yeah, is a weird phrase. Uh, but he is not half the pass catcher that David Johnson is. Of course, of course. And it's a matter of, you know, does that rookie get out there and look like he can't handle himself? Does he drop it, you know, dump it down? Um, man, can we muse for just a second on the on the Watson situation? Sure. Is that all right? I know that that's like been a is who it's knows? a messy situation. It's gross. Uh, we've been down this road. I mean, not this exact road. Yeah. But we've been down a number of messy situation roads. What I want to muse on is not so much the specifics of the off the field case. But I mean, I, what I want to talk about is what an awkward position the Denver Broncos brass would be in right now, because if. You can't trade for him. No, I know. I know you kind of can't. You, but, you but think ab- think about what position they're in. You win a Super Bowl, or you or you're at least that's uh, what I'm saying. Like you're a contender. You all have jobs as the general manager and as the you know all of these leaders of the team. You have Drew Locke. You know what it takes to win at the NFL level, and you know that Watson possesses that physical on the field ability. You don't know what the outcome of this off the field thing is. But here you are. You're you're sitting there, and you have to figure out how to win at the NFL level. And this talent is is dangling there. And this is not just the Broncos. This would be other teams too. Going, uh, yeah. when is it okay for me to make this move? Yeah, that's never. I mean, <laughs> it's one of those things where it would be super tough because if I was the general manager, I uh, you know it makes your team better, and you know you can't do it. So that. That's really difficult. But somebody will do it eventually. And this, you he think will, so? hundred percent. I think he'll get back on the field at some point in time. I think I, there was a time this offseason I thought he would never play again. But um But that's in the range of outcomes. Like how do you trade for a player that may never see the field again? No, I, I that's the problem. And like at the at the pace of which th- the legal things and happen, like to me the most to me, the outcome, at least for this year, is commissioner's exempt list for Watson. We've, we've seen that happen to players several times while everything is trying to get figured out. Uh, and, and so that's a whole year of yeah, you still can't trade for that player. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's, that's what I see is that I think he's going to end up on the commissioner exempt list as well. It's very possible, but I don't know. I mean, we've been down, yeah, no, we've been down roads in, in every sport with situations like this. Uh, we had Big Ben go through situation. I think the most likely off the field outcome is some sort of settlement, some sort of punishment from the league, and then. But the punishment. Then Watts is going to be playing someplace else at some point in time. Yeah. And uh, look, it, he's not in our rankings. If you go, he's because we don't know what's happening. But man, what a tough position as a general manager at some point in time to sure. be like, will my fan base accept this? Yeah, I mean, let's say he's reinstated. Complete. He's he's uh, settles in. Um, they give him a six game suspension, and uh, let's just say, and then six games are over, and he's right. he's allowed to come right back. now. Right now, that right now you can trade for him, and, and the NFL says he can start. Oh, everyone's fighting for him. Hundred percent. That's that's. Woof. that's I think tough. that that I think that there's a decent chance that happens before the season, that you know all of that stuff, and then there's a there's going to be a a battle for Deshaun Watson. Good, because um, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, we don't control it. But your ability for teams to forgive and put you back on the field is proportionate to the level of talent that you have. If it's not worth it to the team, yeah, I mean that is they just boot you to the sideline. But if it's worth it to the team to get through it, that is one hundred percent the sad truth. I mean, we've seen it too many times. If you're not talented and you do something wrong, you're out of the league. I mean, we were sitting here thinking Tyree Kill would never play football again. Right. Oh yeah. Wait for I- an off season. Going, yeah, there's zero. Pre- Not only will he never play football again, but there's zero percent chance he gets a contract extension. And both of those things happen. Yep. Yeah. When he's the number one or number two wide receiver draft. Exactly. Winning so. changes things. Winning changes things. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's going to be, I mean, we, <laughs> we're along for a different roller coaster ride with one of these every offseason. And that's super unfortunate. Yeah, if they could stop 
doing that it's our <laughs> least favorite part of this job is when these things come up and people want to know what you i mean we don't know we don't know what's going to happen here we don't know what happened really and we don't know what's going to happen so if you don't know either of those you don't really talk about it right right if you don't know what happened and what's going to happen not a lawyer no no not bird at all. law but bird yeah. law yeah. <laughs> wow card yeah that's a that's a all uppercase wild card into sean watson's case all right we are done for today's episode. We do have a foot cast for you this afternoon at jointhefoot.com. Go Take Suns! Care. Go Suns! <laughs> Goodbye! See ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.